Dear God, thank you. Uh, thank you for today. Thank you for this Sunday. Um, thank you for bringing us together at CYG. Please fill Pastor Sam with the Holy Spirit, and please help us to um, listen to his word, and please fill us with the Holy Spirit as well. Please um, give us your word throughout the week, and um, thank you for this 2023, and as it near the end of the year, please um, fill us with the Holy Spirit next year as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Yeah. Seniors' prayer is a little different. I like that. <laughs> All right. So we are? And we live through? Four, one? Three. All for the? G2G. Good. That is our theme, and I, think, I believe we will continue that theme on in 2024. If you don't know what 413 is, CYG is Covenant Youth Group. 413 is Philippians 413. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's also the Bible verse Steph Curry puts on his shoes, and this is the reason why he does that, is G2G. Glory to God. Okay, so, you guys, so, so if you didn't know. So guys, we're here on the 22nd question of our Westminster Shorter Catechism. There's over 100. Um, and it goes through the basic uh, baseline, I, I heard a word today, baseline tenets of our faith. Okay, I'll, I'll try not to use big words, but it's the foundational beliefs of our faith to go through. So these are very, very good. Um, I know it gets in very, very much, it goes, goes into very, um, a lot of detail, um, but it is something that I know you'll benefit from. So last week was about Christ the Redeemer, right? Remember that? Why we need to be redeemed. Um, so today's question is, how did Christ, being the Son of God, become man? And another way to rephrase that question is, why does he have to be a man? Is Jesus a man? And there are different um, views upon that as well that came up in the early church, and the early church had to combat that because some people said, no, he's fully just, he's just a man, not God. And some people said, no, he's only God, and he was not a man. Does that make sense? Because God can't be with man. Uh, but the biblical, it's unbiblical, both of those views are unbiblical, but the Bible says that he is fully God and fully man. How is that possible? It's impossible with man, but possible with God, okay? So how did Christ, being the Son of God, become man? Let's read this together. Ready to go? Christ, the Son of God, became man by taking to himself a true body and a reasonable soul, being conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, I the in the womb of the Virgin Mary, and born of her, yet without sin. So this is very important. He had a true body. He was born a baby. But not only just a body, he had a reasonable soul. That word is like an old English term to say that he had a simple, he had a soul. He actually had a soul. That's how human beings are made. It's not just the biological spark of life physically. God creates, the way that God created the design of humanity was with a soul. And we went over that many, many times before. But it's those two aspects, the Holy Spirit and him being not only divinity, divine God, but also having a body. Now, why is that so important? Why does Jesus have to be a man? Why does he have to be a man? Why can't he just be God, just an illusion of a man, like a, like a ghost or something, like a superpower? Why does he actually have to be human? Okay, so true body is the thing. And I wanted to explain it through different ways, but I think this showing you a clip um, will help you because visually, right? I think uh, you guys would learn more, more uh, easier with visuals, no? Yes? So it's just a three minute clip, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna go through it right here. Why is the humanity of Jesus important? Is there a volume thing? Discovermore.org. The humanity of Jesus is as equally important as the deity of Jesus. Jesus was born as a human being while still being totally divine. The concept of the humanity of Jesus coexisting with his deity is difficult 
for the finite mind of man to comprehend. Nevertheless, Jesus' nature, holy man and holy God, is a biblical fact. There are those who reject these biblical truths and declare that Jesus was a man, but not God. Ebionism. Docetism is the view that Jesus was God, but not human. Both viewpoints are unbiblical and false. Jesus had to be born as a human being for several reasons. One is outlined in Galatians, but when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Only a man could be born under the law. No animal or angelic being is under the law. Only humans are born under the law, and only a human being could redeem other human beings born under the same law. Born under the law of God, all humans are guilty of transgressing that law. Only a perfect human, Jesus Christ, could perfectly keep the law and perfectly fulfill the law, thereby redeeming us from that guilt. Jesus accomplished our redemption on the cross, exchanging our sin for his perfect righteousness. Another reason Jesus had to be fully human is that God established the necessity of the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. The blood of animals, although acceptable on a temporary basis as a foreshadowing of the blood of the perfect God-man, was insufficient for the permanent remission of sin because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, sacrificed his human life and shed his human blood to cover the sins of all who would ever believe in him. If he were not human, this would have been impossible. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Only a human could sympathize with our weaknesses and temptations. In his humanity, Jesus was subjected to all of the same kinds of trials that we are, and he is, therefore, able to sympathize with us and to aid us. He was tempted, he was persecuted, he was poor, he was despised, he suffered physical pain, and he endured the sorrows of a lingering and most cruel death. Only a human being could experience these things, and only a human being could fully understand them through experience. Declaring that Jesus has come in the flesh is the mark of a spirit from God, while the Antichrist and all who follow him will deny it. Jesus has come in the flesh. He is able to sympathize with our human frailties. His human blood was shed for our sins, and he was fully God and fully man. These are biblical truths that cannot be denied. That answers the question, why is the humanity of Jesus important? On our website, gotquestions.org, you'll find a deeper discussion. Okay, do you guys understand that? A little bit? All the way? 100%? Be quiet. 90%? Okay. So in the video, just a little bit of a recap. Jesus has to be man so that the payment for man's sin can be paid as a man. Does that make sense? If, he, if he's not man, if he's just God, it doesn't work. He has to be fully man. Now I'm going to give you a few points. The Bible says that Jesus was a man. Not only was he a man... It's so small, huh? Can you guys see that? Jesus was a perfect man. Okay? What do we mean by perfect man? Right. Does it mean that he didn't sleep? Does it mean that he didn't get tired? Does it mean that he didn't have emotions? Like he was like a robot. I am perfect. I don't have emotions. I don't have, you know? You know, because that's how, that's how you can see Jesus. Like that's what, it's just what's hard to understand. Religion doesn't understand that. If you see all the other gods that people worship in, in, uh, in, in the world, um, in India, you have a half elephant, half man, um, God, that the head was cut off because uh, the God was, one of the gods was having an affair and they got jealous and they cut off the head. Something, I probably got to get the story wrong or something, but you have these gods that are like away from man, not man, not man at all, and just kind of like, oh, like no emotions, no connection. But the God of the Bible, 
Jesus in the flesh was actually born just like every single person in this room. Do you guys understand that? When he was born, I'm sure he was crying, clearing his throat, gasping for air, needing milk, needing food to sustain his body, not his soul, but his body. Does that make sense? That part of him was human, perfectly. Without sin means that his soul was clean and pure, which also followed his actions and his words, naturally. He's the only human being born that way, other than Adam. That's why he's referred to in the Bible as the second Adam, because the first Adam was just, was just like him. Not entirely because Adam wasn't God, but he was made in God's image with a soul. He was fully human like Adam was. Does that make sense? Okay. So he could be tempted like Adam. Jesus could be tempted, and he was. He was tempted with so many things. Who was the first person to tempt Jesus? Anybody know? Yes. Ooh, yes, it was Satan. The first recorded temptation of Jesus was actually Satan. Satan himself. You think... If Satan himself would tempt Jesus directly, you don't think he would tempt you? He has the audacity to tempt the Son of God. He knows. The devil knows who Jesus is. He knows he's God in the flesh. And that's what he did before Jesus started in ministry in Matthew 4. The devil tempts Jesus with everything, with riches, with food. He's hungry. He hasn't ate for 40 days. Here, eat this food. The Bible says you can turn these rocks into bread and you can eat them. Hey, Call on your angels. Hey, I'll give you all of the riches and kingdom of the world if you will just bow down and worship me. These are all temptations. He was tempted in every way possible through the devil and through all other things too. Yet did not sin. Not even once. Incredible. So he understands the temptations you go through. He understands, you, you know, some walking down the street, and, oh, chica, you know, or whatever. Or <laughs> girls like, oh, Chico, is that even a thing? <laughs> he knows, he knows that temptation. He's, he has eyes, he's, at, he's had eyes. He has emotions, he has hearts, he has hormones, he has everything. That's what it means. It's very biblical that he's fully human. Yet, was without sin. That's most important. He lived like a human, he walked like a human. Okay? And on the cross what happens is he becomes sin. Now, guys, I want you to think about this. I, I mentioned this in the, earlier this morning. But the gravity of what Jesus did when he became sin, okay, just try to think about this. He has no sin. God in the flesh becomes sin. Whose sin? The sins of the people there uh, crucifying him, the sins of the people of that generation, the sins of people in the past, the sins of the people in the future, all of them, he becomes all of them. He becomes the most sinful man in the history of mankind. Yet was, he, he didn't do anything wrong. He never committed a sin, but he becomes it. Okay? He becomes it. He becomes the most sinful man in all of history. Okay? Again, it's not only the people of that generation, it's for all generations. And his suffering on the cross was not just physical. See, I think that's where a lot of religion, religious Christians, Catholics, get it wrong. Not just Catholics, but Protestants too. They look at the suffering image of Jesus and they're like, oh my gosh, she must have been so much in pain. And there's even people and priests in, this, in the streets in Spain where they get a whip when it's time, that the Passion Week, and they like literally, <laughs> they're taking a whip and they're, 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 they're walking and there's blood all over them. Have you guys ever seen that? No? Heard of that? Yes? Yeah, they do that. Or getting on your knees and crawling up and just making yourself go into so much pain and suffering. Yes, Jesus suffered tremendously physically, but it doesn't even come close to comparing the pain that his soul went through, becoming sin. We can't even imagine it. We'll never even come close to experiencing what Jesus did spiritually. The suffering of his soul, the anguish of his soul becoming sin. He had never become it. And he does. 
He suffers. His soul suffers, and that's why he utters on the cross. And I didn't understand it before. I was like, wait a minute. Isn't that Jesus? He's God. How is he, like, crying out? He's experiencing his soul in anguish, in torment, becoming sin, being separated from God. And he cries out to God and says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Such re if someone was going to make up a story to have Jesus be God, you wouldn't record that part. You know what I'm saying? If you're conjuring up a story, you wouldn't write those words of Jesus. You would write words like, I am the Alpha and Omega. <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd write something to make it more believable, but it's so much more believable when you think about it. They just wrote what they saw, guys. And they account in all three Gospels his words, and it's not in English. I can't repeat it in Hebrew, but something. But he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he cries it out because he's experiencing it. We can't even imagine. He becomes sin, y'all. God in the flesh who did nothing wrong becomes sin. Okay? It's not just a suffering, a physical suffering, but it was spiritual. And on the cross, he cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why? Okay? Why did he do that? Because he died for your sins. Why did he do that? Because we can't. He doesn't want us to die. He doesn't want us to pay. Are you feeling me? That's good news, isn't it? No? It's, it's, it's really good news that God says, no, you don't pay, I'll pay. You don't die, I'll die. Okay? That's the gospel. So when you think about Jesus, when you think about his humanity, it's so important that you understand why he had to be a human. He had to be a human so that he could take care of your sin. Okay? As a human. He had to take care of the sins of humanity as a human, he had to live a perfect life. He was born under the law, just as every human being was born under the law, yet was without sin. Okay, so let's read this together. Ready, go. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Okay. This is the last verse. Let's read this together. Isaiah 53, ready to go. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days, and the will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. The weight of sin, the debt of sin, is not just physical death. It's a tormenting of his soul. He actually becomes sin to the essence of his being, his soul, and it suffers. Okay, those are the words of Jesus. It's not the physical, my God, my God, I'm in so much pain. It's my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What's going on with my soul? He's never experienced before. Right? God, perfect God, becomes sin. He died for your sins. So Jesus died. Yes? Why? So that you don't have to. Okay? Because the wages of sin is death. We learned that a couple weeks ago. Yes? So we're supposed to die. We're supposed to pay that wage. But he dies so that you don't have to die. Jesus paid so that what? So that what? So you don't have to pay. So a lot of people that live religiously are trying to pay God back, but you're, what are you, why are you paying God back? Jesus paid already. So if you say that you have to pay, oh, I have to pay God back, and I understand that heart of wanting, owing God a, a debt of gratitude, of thanksgiving, I understand that. But he doesn't need anything from you to pay him back. Does that make sense? He's already paid it. Yes? He's given you that gift. You don't have to pay anything for it. You just need to receive it. Okay? So Jesus lives, right? He just didn't die and remain. I don't, I don't like images of the cross to begin with, but I hate images of the cross with a dead Jesus on it. 
Have you seen that before? Dead Jesus hanging on a cross? He's not dead. Well, he did die. But he didn't stay dead. No? He didn't. And there's a new thing going around. There's a keychain. And then instead of a cross, it's, a, it's two circles. It kind of looks like an infinity sign. It's a, it's a chain that has, it has an open tomb. Okay, you guys aren't impressed. <laughs> That's going around now. It's a, it's a, it looks like an... No, no, it's just, it looks like an eight, side eight, but it has one solid side and one open side. So it looks like a to, tomb with a stone rolled away. No? Interesting, right? Yeah. The cross is a powerful symbol, but there are some crosses that have Jesus hanging on it, literally. I go to churches in the Philippines and Catholic churches, and you see images of Jesus just dying and he's dead. But he's not dead. Jesus lives. So what? So now I can live. Death? is not the end because Jesus resurrected. He's the first fruit of the resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will not die. So Jesus loves. He loves me. So that what? So now I can love like you're designed to do. You were designed to love. You were designed to love your parents. You were designed to love your siblings. You were designed to love your neighbors. You were designed to love all of humanity. You were designed to love the creation too and care for the creation. That's what you're designed to do. But you can't. But you can now because Jesus shows us that model. He loves you. He loves me. He loves everyone. He loves everyone so that you can love too. Okay. The biggest hindrance of you guys and I not Living out our faith is misunderstanding it. Okay, Jesus was fully man, fully God, yet, with, yet was without sin, and he died for your sins. And he paid it in full. Amen? Amen. You owe a debt. He's paid it in full. Now I'm going to give you an image to try to, try to show you what's, what it's about. So let's just say, I know Maddox plays base, baseball. I heard he's a pretty good baseball player too. I heard that he's being scouted here and there to other schools, like other schools, like, hey, why don't you know, you know, Santa Fe High School, you know, their, their program's not good. You know, you know, Cal High's is better or something like that. But let's just say you're playing catch with your buddies, you're in the park, you're out here in the front, you're throwing catch, and then, you know, Maddox throws a really hard one. When, you know, Isaiah, my son, he just totally blocked it. It hit his, it hit, hit his glove and, well, boom, shattered one of the windows here. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I would hope that my son would own up to it and be like, oh my gosh, I did it. You know, some kids would run away. I ran away a couple times. <laughs> Broke something, I just ran away. I don't know. You know, it's bad. But let's say he broke the window and my son Isaiah broke it. I mean, they, they both had a part in it. Maddox threw it. It was really on Isaiah. It's on him. He dropped the ball. And it hit his glove. He didn't catch it. And it shattered the window. And he came to the owner of this church the pastor and said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I broke the window. I'm sorry. And he's like, it's okay, let me give me your father's, your, 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 give me your dad's number. And then I was just like, oh my gosh, please, please, please not. I mean, you know, do you have money to fix it? No, I, I don't have money. I, I can't fix it. Just, just, just let me talk to your dad. And I get the phone call and he's like, oh, you know, oh yeah, yeah, kids are doing, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. So I do. I go, I pay the the handyman, and he comes in, whew, fixes that window, whew, whew, better than new, perfectly clean, perfectly fixed, yes? So now, my son still feeling pretty bad, Maddox also feeling kind of bad, but not as bad because it wasn't on Maddox, because he threw a good ball, and he just missed it. So Isaiah still feeling bad, comes to Pastor Quinn here, and he says, sir, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. How can I repay you? Let me do something to pay you back. And Pastor Quinn's like, you know, that's such a, bless your heart. You know, that, that, that's a good, I, I, I get your heart. That, man, you're really sorry for what you did. Good, good for that. But hey, you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to do anything. Can you see? It's fixed. No problem. Yep, no cracks, better than new. Oh, okay. Now, the next day, next day, let's say Isaiah comes again, again, 
<laughs> Pastor Quinn, I, was, I know. I just, I, the other day, I broke the window, and I know, I know it's all fixed and everything, but <laughs> you know, can I, uh, you know, can I do something? And then now, Pastor Quinn is like, "Is there something wrong with this kid?" Like, <laughs> look, <laughs> there's, there's no wrong. There's no, no, uh, dude, just just go. Just be careful. You know, just be careful. It's fixed. And day after day, if Isaiah came, day after day, <laughs> after a while, the Pastor Kins is going to be like, I'm not going to answer this. I'm not going to answer the door anymore. <laughs> like, go home. <laughs> like, you know. What Jesus did, guys, it's, it's silly to compare your soul and the state of your soul to a window. But that's basically what it's like. Okay? We owe a debt of we owe a debt that's unpayable. We cannot pay it. We cannot fix it on our own. Jesus pays the debt. He fixes our soul. Amen? Amen? Okay? And that's the truth. And he did that as a human being. That's the only way. Okay? So remember that. All right? Let's close in the Lord's Prayer. Okay? Ready? Go. Kingdom come, your will be done slowly on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you have a trouble praying at night, you don't know what to pray, pray that. Okay, start with your identity, our Father in heaven, and pray this prayer, okay? Who are we? Who are you? How do we live? What do we live for? <laughs> okay, let's have forum. These are the three forum questions.